Okay, so today, welcome to our Ask April and Cindy, um, our episode for the third time. This is the third one we've done. And this week we're talking about Alaska. Uh, April takes uh, trips to Alaska with her groups and has been there several times. So we're going to just pick her brain a little bit about um, some stories and some events and some tips on what to do and, and enjoy when you go to Alaska. Are you ready, April? Yeah, I sure am. Okay. So so let's just start with why Alaska? Why is that a location that you've chosen to uh, to visit? Is there something special there for you? Well, I'll, I'll share that. I'll answer that by sharing that, honestly, from, and I've been traveling the United States for many years. My parents used to always, even though we they worked really hard and they only got a few weeks of vacation like most Americans, they set aside that time and save money all year for our uh, summer vacation. And we'd pile into a car and plan our road trip across the United States. We never took a road trip to Alaska. I will say that from the get go. So as I got older in life, it kind of stayed on the list of states that I wanted to visit because of my goal was to visit all 50 states. And it kind of was in the background. I kind of kept getting kind of pushed off to the side. And one day I came across, um, a, an article, an article about the Northern Lights. So then all of a sudden, like, for whatever reason, the light bulb went off in my head as sometimes it does. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can go to Fairbanks and see the Alaska, you know, the Northern Lights and, and do both kind of just go see the Northern Lights, see part of Alaska. And as a photographer, seeing the Northern Lights or just as a person, I was just fascinated by some of the photographs I'd started to see. Um, you know, ever since people got into digital photography and once the internet became, you know, that's what everyone had. I mean, years ago when I started photography, it was all slides and films and print. Um, and I may have seen pictures of the Northern Lights then, but I don't think the quality, the ability of the cameras was as good. So I'll, I just called up my dad and said, you know what, I want to go see the Northern Lights and I just want to go do that. And I can probably do that in a five day three, four day a weekend, like a long weekend from work. And he's like, what? He's like, why would you go to Alaska and just go to Fairbanks when you can go to Denali? It's just right there and you can do this and you can do that. So then in the course of that conversation, my dad and I decided to go to Alaska. So as a lot of my trips have started, they've usually started with going with a family member, either as a child or as an adult. And so that was when I fell in love with Alaska, was the trip to go see the Northern Lights. And that's why I keep going back, to be honest, is to see the combination of the landscapes and the Northern Lights. So kind of look a long answer there, but that was my initial draw is, uh, and because you can go to Alaska fairly reasonably from the West Coast, um, you can, you know, American or Alaska Airlines was flying there. If you buy the tickets early enough, sometimes you can catch a sale. And so the prices tend to be fairly reasonable. And I think that we may see that if people buy tickets now and can plan ahead for, you know, late fall and winter, I think some of these destinations are going to be places that people will want to consider given our current health situation and the health scares and Maybe even some of I, you know, none of us have any idea how long this virus and these closures may impact us travel wise. So, right, right. So it sounds like it was, you know, you're on your bucket list, of course, to see, you know, as many states as possible. And Alaska right. bumped itself up in the list because you, you know, got the opportunity to see the Northern Lights. Um, and so I'll just ask, did you see them the first time you went? Did, Actually, I did. I was very, very lucky. Um, I contacted a photographer and his wife that lead uh, photography tours just to see the Northern Lights. And he advised me to, he's like, don't, don't put all your money on just coming for, you know, a lot of people do that. They get three days off from work or a long weekend. And so they'll fly up from LA and put like, it's like gambling. It's like, they'll put all their money on like, okay, I got one or two nights and that's it. And then go home. And I said, well, I understand that, but um, I don't have a lot of extra vacation days. So I, I did set aside two nights. And fortunately we did see them both nights and my dad got to see them. And that was a joy too, because he'd never experienced it to that intensity. Um, as a child growing up in the Midwest, he remembers as a kid, sometimes waking up and seeing 
like a colored sky, kind of a hazy coloredness to the sky and was told like, oh, that's the Northern Lights, but nothing where it was like dancing and, you know, all the different colors. So we were just ecstatic and, you know, it was just so exciting to, to experience that. And that's what keeps kind of drawing me back is it, it's different each time. And sometimes in the last several times that I've gone, there have been some nights, you know, usually one of the nights, the last few trips, I, it hasn't been as brilliant or as intense. We might see a quick, you know, dance of it. And then it's kind of gone for the rest of the night or, you know, just that kind of greenish hazy thing. And then it's not as intense. So it's really, you know, there's no way to predict it. You know, it's nature. So it's really hard to outguess when other than you need a lot of dark nights, you need dark skies to see it. Right, right. It's not something you can guarantee to see, but it's definitely, um, if you're there long enough, the op, you know opportunity is, is increased. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. And there is sort of a season to it. So when you're, let's just talk some logistics about when you go to Alaska. It sounds like you fly there from here and Alaska Airlines is a good option. I know a lot of people do things like take cruises and I imagine you can, you could do the drive, which sounds horrendously long <laughs> here um, although not terrible if you enjoy that kind of thing um, so when you get to the I mean how do you get around do you stay in one city it sounds like your dad encouraged you to go from place to place can you tell us a little bit about movement when you're in Alaska and some of the oh, suggestions yeah. Places to go? yeah if you know if you don't have a lot of time and you just want to focus on one area you could fly into anchorage um there is the train and a lot of people will take the train up to denali and then continue on i believe the train does go on to i'm sure it does fairbanks but you can see the northern lights obviously outside of denali national park and there's wonderful places to stay there um, you can take the train down to Seward, um, another peninsula. There's a lot of areas of Alaska, so you could do that. Um, personally, I like to fly in and rent a car because then you can, you know, you see something amazing, you can pull off the side of the road or you can, you know, wander it and take more road trip type things at your own pace. So I tend to fly in, rent a car, and I was, I did do a little bit, um, and I know I researched it in the past, you could say fly into Anchorage or Fairbanks and then rent the car and drop it off in the other city, but there is a drop-off fee to do that as, as opposed to flying in and out of the same city, you know, there isn't a drop-off fee then for the car, so it kind of depends on your, you know, the amount of time you have to spend for something like this, but personally, I like renting the car and doing my own driving and exploring. And there's not a lot of roads in Alaska, but the, everything is just big there. I guess the word I would use is big landscapes, just huge. I mean, it's just kind of amazing to then try to, for me as a photographer, take what I'm seeing and, and get that into a photograph to, con to convey that. Right. So, okay. Um, and then when you're moving from place to place and enjoying that, um, and what, what are some of the types of locations? I think you and I have personally had this conversation about places that you stay in in Alaska, but can you share with everybody else like where you stay and how you've connected sure. to folks? Yeah, um, I like to find, um, as I mentioned in the New England episode as well, I tend to like to stay in family owned places or bed and breakfast. Places where you would have a, you have an opportunity to interact with the locals and also other travelers that would be staying there because by virtue of a bed and breakfast you have your most of them you have your own room your own private bathroom so you're not sharing a common bathroom although some will have that so read the descriptions or call and ask and talk to them but the idea then is to gather at breakfast time and share you know that breakfast time together and. Some people will plan it so with the owner that, hey, we're getting up early and, you know, so they'll be the only ones out there eating breakfast. But I often like, you know, meeting the other travelers. In fact, this last year, one of the bed and breakfasts I stayed at, I, it was wonderful. We met this other couple that was traveling, a husband and wife, and we were all sitting there chatting and she had a camera and a couple of us had cameras. Some of us had um, just our cell phones that we were that they were taking photos with and so they were sharing what they were seeing and then we connected so she actually came to california at the holidays and and we went up the coast together and saw her castle but 
I also, there's places, cabins to stay. There's some really wonderful places on the water. There's yurts, there's um, more camping type situations and little cabins. They have wet cabins and dry cabins, which um, if some of our listeners aren't familiar, a uh, dry cabin is where you don't have your own, you don't have a bathroom. You don't have, you know, a sink or a bathroom or anything like that. And I met a young woman who in Alaska and she leads um, like day trips and stuff. And we were talking and she's, I think she was like in her twenties and she rents her place where she lives, like her apartment complex, she'd call it, is essentially a grouping of dry cabins. And then they have a shared building with showers, bathrooms, you know, washer and dryer. So she literally has like a hot pot. And I think she said, I think a small refrigerator, but she technically doesn't, she has no running water in her place that she lives. And I I found that really interesting. (laughs) But, you know, she was so happy and just her lifestyle of living and being outside and enjoying nature and then you know where she enjoyed her grouping of these cabins and I was like wow what a different way to so I think by staying getting kind of back to the question of where to stay you have all the options I mean if you're if you're a person that likes to have a a hotel and you like to use your points there's definitely in the cities you're going to have your like Anchorage, you're going to have your Marriott's, your, you know, what you expect from that type of property, all the way to more rugged, like cabins, camping, yurts, and then, like I said, the bed and breakfast, which are really fun, really enjoy that, because you will get to talk to people that live there. I mean, they make Alaska their home, maybe not all year, but even six months out of the year, or they do, they live there 12 months out of the year, and they share what it's like to live in such a different place. I mean, and uh, for a lot of us, I think we kind of see Alaska almost as its own country, its own island, because it is so far removed from, you know, the lower 48 states, so. Right, right, that's great. And so you have, on the PDF that we're sending out, you have some suggestions of those. Yes, I do. Yeah, because I think that's one of the things that's, I think we talked about last time, Airbnb and others have kind of moved away from the bed and breakfast approach, which was way more popular, I think, you know, between like the 70s and maybe early 90s. And um, and now people aren't using them as much, those little boutique hotels, which is such a shame because I, I think that, like you said, there's a lot of locals that goes on local conversations and it's a different kind of an environment than just a regular hotel. So, and they might be a little harder to find. So your recommendations yeah. are so will be great um, as to where to go and, and, and which ones have, they have like, I, I look at them like they have quirky personalities, right? Yes. Do you think yeah, that they too? do. I really find that. And they're, there's such a variety. I mean, there's a place that's um, down on the peninsula right near the ocean and he's like the gentleman runs a boat. So you could also do a tour with him, but then you can stay in his home and, you know, it's a couple of rooms and, and again, your own bathroom, but then you're, you know, you're really stepping into his lifestyle basically for the time that you're there, whether it's the weekend that you're, you have time for or longer. And it's just, it's just such an amazing opportunity. It's really, you know, it, really immerses you a bit more than I would say sticking to what you know in a you know in your comfortable space you know as far as like you know you're used to a Marriott that's the experience you're going to get and I don't think you're going to get that special interaction that you might find at some of these locally owned places. Right it's a it's a bit of an adventure right because you're going right. to get different things and things that are unexpected but that's part of the beauty of travel is to get that kind of unexpected experience so yeah um, it out of you know the, I keep looking at Alaska as such a vast state right it's huge there's so much to see and I'm sure the landscape and the things to do and see in the in the state vary widely from one end to the other. Oh, completely. Um, I mean, and I feel like I've just scratched the surface, to be honest. And since I, and I've kind of stuck to what I call the spine of Alaska going, you know, with Denali and Fairbanks and Anchorage, but there is, there is so much more to see. And, and it's, uh, you know, areas that are definitely worth exploring that I hope to take more time and do at some point myself as well. 
Right. And so what would you tell someone who's planning a trip to Alaska that they absolutely don't want to miss or it's the places that they really want to hit or, or even the highlights that you've had on your trips? I would definitely do, you know, I think it depends on what your interests are and do your research. If you're really outdoorsy, you might, I mean, there's so many amazing outdoor experiences from taking a small airplane um, with a guide and going and actually walking and hiking on a glacier. Um, you can go fishing and go out with a small group and depending on what season it is, they'll tell you what kind of fish you're gonna come back with and then they'll help prepare it and ship it home for you. Um, so it really depends on your interest. Like for me, the Northern Lights was what really attracted me originally and then Denali and it, you know, Denali is one of our national parks and it's such a different national park than the others, in my opinion. And again, it opens up that really adventurous spirit. They have shuttle buses that run through the park that they don't allow private cars after the first 30 miles. So in order to access the rest of the park, you can either hike it yourself or you can get on one of these shuttle buses and get into the back country that way. And you can either stay on the bus or you can get off and then take a hike and get back on the bus. And being that there's lots of bears, <laughs> and I've seen lots of the bears close up, I've kind of opted for staying on the bus most of my experiences there. But yeah, I would recommend doing your research. Um, go in the shoulder season, summertime, because it's they get the intense darkness, mo you know, in the winter months, it stays dark for hours and upon hours, and then you get the reverse in the summer gets really, really busy in those summer months. So if you can try to plan your time to go in May or, you know, right when it's turning to fall, like September, October, I think that you'll find less people. I mean, there are always going to be places to go to get away from the crowds. But if it's your first time and you're going to go to somewhere like Denali, you may want to pick one of those shoulder season months. That makes sense. Um, I, I think that's true for most locations. Um, just picking the shoulder season, you get away from the crowd and um, Alaska is going to have that midnight sun yeah. problem, right? Right. So <clears throat> people are going to flock in the summertime because there's lots of sunlight and avoid the dead of the winter because it's going to be dark too often. Right. Um, so those shoulder seasons are pretty much the only time you can go. You really wouldn't want to go in the winter because you wouldn't see the beautiful landscape. There wouldn't be enough daytime. Right. Um, it would right. be so fleeting. Yeah. If you go in winter, your goal probably in winter is really to go see just the northern lights and the but the hours of daylight to experience the landscape is so 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 limited. Right. Right. I know. Yeah. It's just it you re, it reduces so drastically. It's quite amazing to to watch it go from you know the sunset tonight at five o'clock and then tomorrow it's going to set at four. Right. <laughs> it goes really fast as the sun is moving. So. Um, okay. And so now have you taken some of these flights and helicopter tours and that kind of thing? And are those worth the money? Is that something you would encourage you? I know you mentioned it early on others to do. I actually haven't put down the money yet to do one of the flight tours. Um, we did stop and talk to a woman that had several of the little boats that take, you know, or the flight planes that land on the water. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I can't think of the name. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> but um, it it does look amazing, uh, especially if you wanted to get onto the actual glacier and do some, you know, see something. And to see, I know my father one year um, did do one of the flights to go in the plane and get closer to the mountain, you know, see mount the mountain Denali. Um, uh -huh. But I've not actually spent the money to do that, so I can't personally yeah. speak on that. Yeah. No, and it makes okay. it worth it. It's just, yeah, it's just not something I've attempted yet. And I got the all of all the times I've gone to Alaska, many of the times the mountain, the Denali, which is the main, the largest mountain, is shrouded in clouds. And so one of the nice things about the last time I went was that it wasn't. We went through the day and the mountain was out. We could see it all day. And I just kept telling the women that were with me, I'm like, you have no idea how lucky how amazing this is, you know, it's your first time and you get to see the mountain. It's like, 
and they, you know, they kind of looked at me because they couldn't imagine looking at that landscape and not seeing the mountain dominating it. And I was like, and the bus driver, well, there's many times that we drive through as a park here that you just won't see it. And, and it, you know, if you have experienced that, like I had all the other times I'd been there, I was right. like, yeah, it's just so different when you see the mountain and when you don't. <laughs> Right, right. And I imagine getting up on that mountain or at least high, because I like to do that. We've talked about that. It's one of the things I like to do when I travel is to get high in the city or in the location to be able to look down upon it. And I imagine that yeah. that is, is just as good as taking the flight or at least uh, in the same way you get to see the, the landscape from afar, which is right. breathtaking, right? Um, okay. And so then let's let's talk about you know some of the times that you visited and and something that you a lesson that you learned or it's something you'd recommend people not do or a mistake or something <laughs> that's happened um let's see I you know I saw this question and we've talked about it before and I was trying to think I think well the first time that I was planning to go I think I would have made a mistake had I not added a couple extra days to see the Nali and you know if i'd gone just to say see the northern lights and that's all i've done i did um i think that might have been a mistake after you've already committed the time to go up there you know not to see because denali is just so incredible the landscapes the mountains just the tundra in the fall it turns all kinds of colors it's a different landscape i mean there's not a lot of trees but the tundra itself changes color and just the amount of wildlife that you have an opportunity to see right there in denali um that would have been a mistake had i gone just for the sole purpose of seeing the northern lights i think you but the missed. other thing yeah i think i would have missed out on the whole you know what alaska really is about kind of the, the broad you know landscapes and just the variety of landscapes from the water um, you know, getting that, I have taken a little boat out from one of the peninsulas to go out to see the glaciers and to hear the glaciers cracking and see that blue of the glacier and that, and, and that in itself is amazing too. So I think it's all about trying to make the best of your planning to okay. not, yeah, so that you get out of the trip what you want. I think a lot of times we get excited and, and sometimes you do, you have a limited amount of time, something come up, comes up on your radar and you're like, okay, I'm just going to go. But taking just a little bit of time to pre-plan so you go and are rewarded with, you know, maybe a little bit more than you bargained for. This right. I, I, actually think I, I just had a conversation with a friend the other day and she was telling me about a trip she took. And I won't talk about the destination, but she was really disappointed in the trip. And she was asking my advice as to what she could have done better. And as I listened to her, I was, my answer was plan. You, you didn't think through where you wanted to go, what you wanted to do. So you missed a lot of things and that really right. is just a matter of planning and you might need help with that. And that's what April and I do also help people put itineraries together. I mean, that's the kind of thing that is, you'll waste a lot of time and money if you go to a location and you don't have, you know, you don't have any real plans. As I told right. her, you don't, you don't really need them if you're okay with missing some things right um and the other thing i had suggested to her is that she could have asked um some people like that would have been one of the first things i did i said you can, don't have to plan before you get there but you sort of have to plan day by day and yeah. i i think that that is something and we all come back from trips and wish we would have had time to see x whatever right. that is right yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's just not, not possible or i wish i would have gone during this season because i've heard that that was better so you can't you you can't do it all and you can't see everything but planning and prioritizing really does make a difference I wanted to just take a minute because we have a few minutes left and you mentioned the wildlife and I didn't I don't I just like to hear what you've seen what kind of wildlife you've oh, seen yeah. I think that'd be really interesting to people yeah um and wildlife wasn't something I tend to do a lot of landscape photography uh, but I'm not a huge wildlife person but the wildlife was incredible and now when I go to Alaska, I look forward to what kinds of wildlife I'm going to see. And in Denali, if you go in the fall, the moose are rutting. They're having, the, you know, the males are fighting for domination and for the female. And so they're literally running into each other with their massive horns. And it's just an amazing, incredible sight to see. And 
there's a parts of, of the park in Denali where they tend to congregate and the park service knows it and they try to, you know, they try to keep you at a safe distance, which is very smart, but you, but still they're, they're within, you know, you can roll, drive your car right there and roll the window down and, you know, maybe 15 feet away, there's these massive moose and wow. Yeah. And so I've seen moose, I've seen lots of bald eagles. I've seen uh, the puffins, which are these, uh, there's these beautiful like bird ducks that fly with these bright orange beaks. They're amazing. Um, there's a lot of, you know, the whales. I've seen whales. I've seen seals, otters, um, elk, reindeer, uh, bears. There's a lot of bears in Denali and I've seen them every time I've gone. And the last time they had an incident near the visitor center where unfortunately a couple backpackers, and I think they were day hikers, they thought, they had food in their backpacks. So the bears have an incredible sense of smell. And right. so the bear started to come towards them and they literally threw their backpacks down and took off. Well, what the park tries to do in Denali is to, they don't want the animals to get used to people. They don't, they, this right. is a really wilderness type situation. And they want to keep that interaction between people and the wildlife very, very minimal. So they literally had to close that visitor center off. Our bus stopped in there that time, but like they said, we couldn't get out on the trails. We were allowed to only run and use the outdoor restroom and then get back on the bus. And they were trying to kind of with dogs, which was something new to me, kind of retrain and scare away the bears from that area to kind of keep them away again, kind of retrain them that, because now they'd had the smell of this food and the backpacks right. and you know, the whole people experience. But yeah, Alaska is full of animals. And I highly, I highly recommend going for that because they're, they're, they're there and they're, you can see them. And I think, again, the shoulder seasons are good for that because I'm sure in the summer, there's more people just by nature of that, the animals may tend to kind of disappear into the, right. literally into the woods, be away, you know. Right. That's exactly what I would expect. But, well, great. It sounds like you saw, saw some um, amazing wildlife. And that's, I think that's another reason to go to these places that are wildernessy um, and where you can get out in, into the, those areas and see the wildlife in the wild actually behaving the way they, they do. Um, right. So that's great that that's part of the the experience. Um, okay, well, we just have a couple minutes. I'm gonna, there's a chat window on the Hangouts. If anybody has a question, we can ask April. I do. Okay. Hi, April, it's Lily. Hey, Lily, thanks for joining us. So what's your You're question? Um, where do you fly to? I fly in and out of Anchorage myself. There's a lot of flights that go to Anchorage. I have had um, people fly into Fairbanks and meet me. Like this last year, someone didn't have as many days off. So they kind of did half my tour and flew in there. Um, but if I was, if it was your first time to Alaska, I would definitely advise going into Anchorage just because of the frequency of the flights. And in light okay. of what's going on with the virus, I'm, I would start planning that now. I just did a brief look today at um, both availability because Denali gets very busy. And I think because everyone's kind of, I, I don't like to use the word locked up, but we're kind of locked in in a way. I think people are looking at fall and late summer, like, oh my gosh, I really want to travel and where can I go? And, you know, Labor Day weekend is super busy as it is in any location because it's a longer weekend for families. So if you were planning to use that time, I would start looking at, you know, where to stay, you know, you can always reserve a car ahead of time. And that's one thing you can very easily cancel as a rental car. Or if you want to look at train tickets, um, the trains are really nice I've heard. And it's an easy way to not then have to do the driving, let someone else do the driving. It's very scenic in Alaska. I've had a lot of, good feedback from the trains there. Okay, but your trips are usually, uh, are they in September? I usually go like the first part of September, okay. just to hit that shoulder season because right before they do shut down Denali National Park completely pretty much to, to tourists, to cars, to everything. And so it's closed in the winter time. If you're a back 
country person, you could type yourself in, not something I'd advise unless you're really skilled. Um, and I also go because that's the time of year where it starts getting dark enough. We have enough hours of darkness to start seeing and experiencing the northern lights. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? You're welcome to type them in or uh, take yourself off mute if you have a question. We'll wait a few seconds here. Yeah, I know that half hour goes quick. <laughs> it does. Thank you. That's all I had to say. Oh, oh, you're thanks, welcome. Thank you. Okay. Well, then I guess if no one has any questions, we've learned a lot about Alaska. And of course, it, I think in the light of the, our current situation, these fantasy plans of where we can go when we're when uh, we're, we're, yeah. we're allowed to go is uh, is keep us inspired. So we'll continue to do these. We have another one next week. Um, and so you can join us then. And we'll keep doing these and maybe we've been talking about doing some other types of content so because we're stuck here at home and we can't do other types of events so watch out for that and we'll keep you guys posted so thank you yeah right. thanks everybody thank for have, having us. Us. have a wonderful have, evening yeah great thank you. you bye bye, bye.